I don't fare too well with my landscape photography in summer. It's not a time of the year that I thrive. <laughs> in fact, I, I struggle quite a lot, you know, in the early starts, the late finishes, and for me, the landscape in summertime is busy, overgrown, and I'm just not inspired or motivated to get out and shoot. So I'm thinking, how not only can I keep this channel going, but how can I use the time to benefit me at another time when conditions are more favorable? Well, the best thing to do is just use the fair weather and long days to explore. And that is exactly what we're doing today. Out in the van, checking out new locations and trying to find new subjects. If you watched my previous video, you will have seen that I did a lot of driving but with no photography and I hate it when that happens. However, whilst out in the van, I was keeping notes of all the locations that we passed through and marking those which had the most photographic potential and this is one of those locations. So this place that I'm exploring is actually a military firing zone so it's not open all of the time. But when it is open, it's just incredible. I've never been here before other than last week when I was out in a convoy. And I was so taken aback by the remoteness of it and the app, just the scale of it. You can see for miles and miles in the open expanse of space is phenomenal. And that's what got my attention. So I've come back to explore it a little bit. And I'm just looking for anything that stands out in that vast space, whether that's abstract patterns or perhaps a small group of trees out on the moorland. Anything I can, you know, either photograph now or, pho <laughs> or photograph later in the year. Just like this. So this is a great example of what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna put my sunglasses on because it's so bright. This is a great example. Behind me, uh, just where I've pulled in, there's this, uh, just a, a small cluster of birch trees uh, grouped together, maybe three or four trees, set against the pine trees, the evergreens. Now, as it stands at the minute, there's not a shot here, absolutely not. But in October, November, when those birch trees start to change color to a nice, golden yellow, that rich, vibrant color that happens with birches in autumn, set against the green pines and, you know, maybe different weather conditions, maybe some clouds behind there. That would be a phenomenal shot. And so by just coming out and exploring these areas, you, know, you could just find little, little nuggets, little nuggets like that that might be worth coming back to. So this is the kind of thing I had in mind, a nice copse of trees in the open landscape. And this one seems particularly nice because it's surrounded by a very attractive stone wall. Now, whether or not there's a shot here, I'm not sure, but well, it's a nice collection of trees. So I'll have a bit of a walk around and see if there's a composition. So I had a good look around this subject, uh, walked around it, walked inside and through it. It's fantastic. I've actually seen it from the air. What you don't realize is that the stone walls are in the shape of a cross, uh, which you don't see from the ground. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, after looking around, I've got two compositions. Um, one with the long lens, one with a much wider field of view. The long lens image is going to fulfill a childhood dream of mine. <laughs> that's right. The long lens image requires me to get on the roof of the van. I need that height, I need that elevation to, to get the best out of the composition. So yeah, not doing it for the, for the YouTube, just uh, genuinely need the height, which is pretty cool. Get this man, I need my sunglasses. It's so bright. We have blue, blue skies. I say that, we have 95% blue, blue skies. <laughs> Apart from where the sun is, 
There are some clouds rolling in from the north threatening to cover the sun, so I might have to get cracking with these shots. But essentially, we're going to be working with quite harsh direct light. So the images that we see today, they're more than likely going to be black and white conversions. Right, I'm not gonna lie, the reality of shooting from this roof is nothing like I imagined it would be. This is horrible. <laughs> Everything's so precariously balanced, including myself. Uh, I'm not enjoying this, but it is worth it because the composition we have here is, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, you know, it's not, it's not bad. Like I say, anything in the summertime I consider to be more or less a recce. But you know, we do have some nice direct light on this copse of trees, beautiful curvaceous S shape in the stone wall, which is a key feature of the composition, both of this image and the one that I'm gonna take next, which I think is better. So I'll get this one out of the way first. It just lacks any real, I don't know, any real mood. The sky beyond, there's absolutely nothing going on. Um, there are these two trees, these two trees that are, Ah, uh, very small, very awkward, all twisted. They're outside of the copse of the main trees. And I, I'm undecided as to whether or not they add to the composition or they distract and take away from the composition. I don't know. Um, but they do kind of fill a space on the left-hand side, I suppose. Anyway, this is the shot. It's a nice image. The reason we're up high is because I needed to be looking over the stone wall. As it curves around, I want to see as much as that curve as possible to do that I had to get up high if I was down low you lose the curve in that stone wall completely so there we go first image done now we'll switch lenses get off the roof <laughs> and go and take the second image All right, 64 to 32 lens, which is the equivalent of about 25 to 50. So we'll put this on, leave the van where it is, and we're gonna walk just over there, get real close to the trees for our next composition. So here we are at the second composition. Um, this one I prefer initially, you know, I never can tell until I get back to the computer, but in the field right now, this is the one that I prefer. There is nothing in the direction that I'm shooting. There is nothing blue, blue, blue skies, but behind me, those clouds are moving in fast. So we're gonna lose the light, which is a shame because it means it's not worth sticking around till sort of, you know, blue hour, really, the very last of the lights because it's gonna get snuffed out. So before the light goes, I better photograph this. Uh, beautiful composition with this stone wall, this, this, this majestic, this kind of almost too perfect stone wall that sweeps in this beautiful S-curve up to this lovely Scots pine. It truly is a fantastic composition. Certainly not at its best right now. But don't worry, we'll be back. We'll be back. I'm, I'm bagging this. I'm putting my stamp on this. Well, it'll be like some famous photographer out there who's like shot this to death and it'll be a well-known location and I just haven't got a clue. So uh, anyway, we'll get this. Um, I'm at F11, focusing on the Scots Pine initially, but I am gonna focus stack because I'm very close to this stone wall. 
and if necessary I'd like the option to blend images to get beautiful detail from front to back. I might not feel it's necessary in the final edit but we'll see. So composition is a vertical sweeping stone wall through to this tree with those two annoying trees on the left because I just can't get rid of them no matter what I do. And here we go, just as the lights begin to fade behind the clouds, we'll take this shot. Fantastic. And I'll take two more where I focus middle of the wall and then the wall right in front of the lens. And then I've got the option to stack those together. So just seconds after taking that last shot, you can see the light's gone now. There's no light on the subject behind me. There's not even any light on my face. Ah, but there we go, two images now. I'm gonna have a bit of a, it's not really a rant, but it's just something that I always wanna state. And that is that I, I'm heavily invested in YouTube and, and in this channel. And part of being successful on YouTube is a lot to do with consistency. The algorithm really rewards you for putting out content on a consistent regular basis and it severely punishes you if you don't keep to that schedule. As a photographer this can be difficult. Now I've certainly no, uh, no cause for complaining, I'm very lucky, I love what I do, but in the summertime when I struggle creatively or when I take images that I am not certain are portfolio worthy images, like these two today, I, I don't think they're portfolio worthy at all. Today's exercise was coming out, finding new locations, new compositions with the idea of coming back at a better time. But I'm still showing the images and with that I think, um, or I worry, that a lot of people judge me on those images. Uh, so they might be watching the channel and go, he's not even, he's not even a good photographer. I could have shot better than that blue skies, man. Yeah, I totally get it, 100%. I, I don't like putting out images that aren't like portfolio worthy. So when I do that, like today, I usually try and build a story or a lesson or something behind it, uh, a takeaway, if you like. Um, so yeah, so I always struggle like with myself this time of year coming out when i'm not inspired to come out and putting out images that i aren't as good as they could be uh, i struggle with that and i just thought i just want you to know that <laughs> that's all i just i felt the need to get that off my chest um so yeah never judge a youtube photographer by the images in his videos that sounds daft but i'm certainly not the only photographer on youtube who must feel this there's got to be others out there who are striving and putting out content, working really hard to put out content, but aren't, you know, just not getting dealt the best hands when it comes to light and conditions and whatnot. And it's a struggle. It is. It's a struggle. So anyway, there you go. That's my piece over and done with. Um, hope you've enjoyed today's video. I have actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll be back here when we get better conditions. It's just another location to add to the list, to the notebook, to the pocketbook. And we'll be back. But I feel like I've been rambling on long enough, so we're going to leave it here. Go back to my van. Beautiful drive home. And, uh, yeah, got some adventures planned. Don't want to say any more than that, but got some pretty cool stuff coming up. So, um, yeah, make sure you stick with the channel. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, all that good stuff. And until next time, oh, book available. Calendar is coming very shortly. It's not, I'm not announced the EX, it's not quite ready, but I do have my 2022 calendar in the works and I'm only ordering a limited quantity. So once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, my, my sort of thing, my hope or my goal, if you like, is I'm being lazy this year. My goal is to just get them all shifted uh, as soon as I can so I can concentrate on other things rather than buying a load and then selling them all the way through till Christmas, which is great, but you know, when I do that, I always feel like the channel suffers. So I want to buy a smaller amount, you know, make them, I suppose, make them kind of exclusive. And then, anyway, I, hey, we're pushing on now. Pushing on, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wasting your time and mine. Anyway, join me next week and uh, I'll see you then. Bye bye.